Hello everyone. Today I am going to present my project classifying business documents using deep learning models. This project is for IBM Coursera Advanced Data Science Capstone. Let's go to content. First, I will describe the use case scenario and then the data used in this project and then the solution proposed based on the use case scenario then how the model is built and evaluated after all how the model get deployed in production and finally the demonstration of that deployed model let's look at the use case imagine a business organization in a typical business environment number of documents flowing in and out between the organization and external entities sometimes between the employees and the organization. These documents could be in many different forms that serve many purposes to the organization. Let's look at document life cycle within an organization. Documents to be captured or retrieved and then to be classified and distributed among relevant departments and people. Those documents to be stored is then used in different operations in the business and then the business has to decide whether they should keep them or discard after use. This decision could be a time sensitive decision as well. Now think of the scenario before digital era. So all the documents are com coming to organization in a, in a paper form and think about this poor guy who has to look at these documents, scan through and then sort based on the content and then put it into relevant bins. So there's a lot of manual work involved. With the use of computers, we can easily retrieve, store and classify these documents. However, we still need to get some human involvement in this process. When an organization is growing in size, both incoming and outgoing number of documents are getting larger. Therefore, the point the human involvement is nearly impossible. We should think about automating this process. There are multiple ways currently in the business scenario are implemented. The rest of this video describes about an implementation of document classification system. Data is an essential ingredient to a data science project. We obtain our dataset from RVL CDIP dataset, which is a publicly available document image dataset. This dataset is made available from a research group in Carnegie Mellon University. You can find the website and also you can go and explore this dataset. The dataset is downloaded in a zip format and then extracted into our local folder. Let's examine a little bit more detail on this data set. Previously, we identified the data source and the data type of these files are TIFF file format. This data set has 16 different document types, images of these documents. You can see the list of them. And then it has 400,000 files. After extracting, it is 46 gigabytes. Before start building something, you need to gather your toolbox. This is my toolbox of building the machine learning model and the final product of this project. You will find many familiar Python libraries you use in your project as well. Not only the toolbox, you need to have a good development environment facilitating your performance needs, your storage needs. So this is my development environment. Previously, I described how I gather data from the original data source. The next step would be to extract the data cleaner and then explore it. To a data science project, we don't normally get a data set ready to be used in a machine learning model building process right away. After you get the data set, first thing you need to do is very carefully examine the data set. If you are using numeric data, you have to load the data set and apply some statistical methods and do some analysis to find out the outliers, 
uh, missing data or any other problems in the data set you can if you are using a supervised machine learning technique you need to know your labeling is correct in your modeling data set after i get this data set first thing i did was i load this data set in the python uh, environment using python image library and then i converted image data into 2d numpy arrays then i checked how we can render the data using matplotlib after examining the usability of image data set the next thing i did was to examine the data labels of this incoming data this data set came as pre-labeled to be used in a supervised machine learning project the images were not organized into folders with their document type label. Instead, the dataset came with a lookup table which can map image path into the data label. First thing I did was taking this image path and then moving all the image images into folders belongs to their uh, document type. After doing that, I had 16 different folders with each labeled with the document type and within the folder I had all the all the images belong to that type. I looked into each of these folders and found out there are incorrect labeling. Out of these 16 different document types I selected six types to be used in the model building. So those are advertisement, handwritten, invoices, letters, resume, and scientific publication. Then I extracted a random sample of documents from this large data set, which had like 3000 documents from each type, and then moved into separate folder. Belongs to their document type. After that, I did my close examination on the document labeling. I removed documents with incorrect labeling from their folder as well as if there's any misclassification among these six types i move documents to the correct group after finishing the data quality check i move into building the modeling data set here i selected two different data sets the first set i choose to be used with the model building process so that data set I split into 70-30 ratios, 70% for training and 30% for testing. Roughly, I had about like 12,000 images for training and about 5,000 for testing. Next, I move into the step of pre-processing images and feature extraction. Since this is an image data set, there's not much feature extraction to be done. However, there should be some uh, methods to be created getting the image data into numeric form. All the images are in TIFF file format. They had a like roughly 760 times 1000 pixel size. They had one channel which is grayscale. To fit into our performance uh, criteria that is our limitation here in this environment, so I had to scale down those images into 128 by 128 pixel size the images before before scaling down images were normalized by aut applying auto contrast algorithm to make images have like more separation in colors and then the image values were converted into 2d numpy arrays those 2d numpy arrays were again normalized to scale between 0 and 1 so each pixel has a value between 0 and 1 at the final data set to be input into machine learning model. Here is the summary of what I did. In the previous stages in this project, I acquired data from its original source, did some data cleanup, identified issues such as labeling issues, and then did some initial exploration and did the feature extraction and did some normalization to fit data into our machine learning environment. Now we have our main ingredient system correct to build our machine learning models. 
let's go into that. Before directly starting machine learning model building, we need to identify whether we got the problem right and whether we have the data correct and are we trying to use the appropriate method to solve this problem and also whether we have correct tools and we have whether we have correct hardware to solve the problem which gives us enough performance to run our machine learning model those are really important let's look into the problem specifics this is a multi-class classification problem and the input data are images in grayscale. That means each pixel in these grayscale images represent a value between 0 and 255. As we identified earlier, we normalize the data into a value between 0 and 1. To solve this type of image classification problems, convolution neural networks are widely used. Therefore, I wanted to try out this technique to see whether it is the appropriate method. I'm also trying other machine learning algorithms as well to compare it with the convolutional neural network method. TensorFlow is a software library which facilitates number of machine learning algorithms including neural networks. It is also available in Python. Processing images is processing large matrices. Therefore, we have to use some kind of performance in our computing environment. I choose my laptop with NVIDIA GPU included in it to fit our neural network models. I hope to get better performance with it. Let's look at two different convolutional neural networks I tried. First one is a basic convolution neural network very similar to the one we used in the class. And the second one I added a few more layers to it to see whether performance is going to be increased. Here you will see two different performance evaluation in the model fitting. The important feature here is after about 20 epochs, the, there's nothing much improvement is going on. Interestingly, the validation loss is going to be increased after about 10, 10 to 15 epochs. So if we continue like increasing number of epochs, this is not going to improve and instead it, the loss is going to be increased. Therefore, I cut down number of epochs to 40. Okay, now we are at the final stage of model building process. We are now trying to evaluate the model and find out which one is the best to use in our application. I applied a number of different models to the dataset. Specifically, I choose the same data set with two different uh, pixel size. The first one is 21 by 28 and the second one is 128 by 128. So three different types of model. The first one is logistic regression equivalent using the uh, TensorFlow library. And then deep feedforward neural network and then the convolutional neural network. So I use uh, two different types of uh, deep feed forward network with added more layers and similar to that the convolutional neural network starting from model 1 which is the simplest model we used in our class and then improved it to model 3 with added layers and I applied all these models to both of the data sets and you will see the performance is much better in with convolutional network as we expected. If we were to choose between which pixel size to be used in our application, I would definitely go for 128 by 128 size. Because as you see in this image, you can identify many features from the document. In contrast to 28 by 28, you have like blurred image, you don't see the letters and any pat any significant patterns to it. 128 by 128 will give you more detail to it. Convolutional neural network as similar to what our human visual cortex is. Therefore, we should definitely go for better detailed image. It would be better if we go beyond this uh, resolution 
but unfortunately with the hardware limitation we have to settle with this 128 by 128 size i have to go back and forth few times with the data cleanup stage because i identified number of images were misclassified in the original data set therefore uh, i re-ran the model fitting algorithm after each uh, data cleanup uh, attempt and the model get better and better but it didn't improve much here are two different performance evaluation metrics you can use to check how your model performs in operational data. Here I used testing evaluation dataset which never used in the model building process. I applied convolutional neural network model 3 onto that and then uh, I got the confusion matrix uh, and then the model robustness matrix out of the resultant dataset. Having more data on the diagonal in confusion matrix and also the accuracy of 91.1% will tell the model is pretty good. I also calculated precision and recall for each class using the confusion matrix data. In the model robustness table, I divided the data set into 10 buckets based on the predicting class probability. That means if the document is predicted to be a letter, the probability of that document being a letter will be the predicting class probability. As you can see, the predicting class probability is between 0.9 and 1. 94% true precision is gained. Similarly, 93.0% of the entire data set is within that bucket. That makes our model is actually really good. This model robustness table I use to generate some uh, operational decision. If the document is predicted with the value between 0.9 and 1, we can consider the document is auto certain. Below that, we have to use some uh, human inspection, at least in the first stage of this. Uh, model application. Here are some results from six different documents on how the model predicted their classification. Almost all of them predicted right. Almost all of them have only one class, 100%. Prediction is very good in those. But I got one example. With a letter with a mix of handwritten and the, the type letter. You will see the model predicted it is 58% handwritten and 40% letter and again 1% has features of invoice maybe if the it is classified as handwritten document. In these cases, we have to have human involvement in the early stage of this model application. Down the road, we can get more data and we can feed more data into the model training and then we can get the model improved. Let's talk about the implementation. I implemented the model in two different ways. The first one is a web application and the second one is a standalone application which is well suited for bulk processing application. In the web application, the user can upload a document using a simple web browser and the, the document will be passed to the machine learning model in an API call and then will be classified and sorted into an appropriate folder. In the second application, user can call it using command line uh, provided a folder containing the image or multiple images and then the, those images will be processed and uh, sorted into appropriate folders. That way, you can use uh, this application on a folder which contains large number of documents. Let's see a demonstration of both of these applications. First, take a look at the web application. Here you will see a screenshot. Uh, in the screenshot, you will see the input area and after you input the image, you will see the visual output and the textual output. And then the action is also displayed. The action means like which folder 
you paste this uh, sort of document. And uh, in this API call, the uh, return value will be a JSON output. You can also use this API without the web browser. You can call it in an, another Python or any other program to return a JSON output of it. Let's take a look at the project workspace in Spider IDE environment. The course folder contains necessary code for data exploration and model building. Data folder contains loaded data set. The models folder contains all the models built in this project. There are different models. And the product folder contains all the product related uh, material, which can be deployed. Let's examine the Flask application developed in this project. The file classify API will provide the essential functionality to call for the API. And file upload form provides the user interface with the HTML input form. Here is the HTML form. I have developed a simple SDK to talk to API you are calling in external Python application without HTML. Here is the sample image path and the URL to call the API. Let's start the Flask API application. Server is started. Now the test run is also successful. We can use this uh, server path copied into a web browser or we can use in another Python application to call the API. Let's call the API using our SDK and with simple command. This is the JSON output and the visual output. Now let's use this in a web browser to talk to API. You have to copy the URL and then you can provide user information to identify the user and then upload the image. After image is uploaded, user can also see the result in the result output page. Let's try one example. This is an invoice sample file. And if you click upload, the document will be uploaded to the API the server and then run through our document classification model and then produce the output. This output is sent as a JSON output. And also you can see the file is moved into appropriate folder. Let's look at another file, resume file. You can see similar output like the one we had before. Let's look at another one. This time it's an advertisement. Now I'm going to demonstrate how the command line application works. For the command line application to work, you need to provide the Python interpreter and the script file in command line parameters. First of all, let's try without any parameters. This gives you an error message indicating you are missing required parameters. Once you provided those parameters, you will see the output. The output will be generated depending on your choice. The output will be written into a text file or a CSV file. Let's look at this CSV file. You will see the file name and the prediction with the probabilities of each classes for that file. So you can also find a column with a class the probability of predicted class. Let's examine the actual. We can examine the folder we feed into the model and then uh, we can fill up this uh, missing column actual values. Then we can compare actual with the prediction. We can see only two of them are missing. And also you can see most of the predicted class probability is about 90%. This ends the demonstration. Thank you for watching.